Hey everyone, and welcome back to our season two rewatch on AGT Time. Cody Patterson here along with along with Jay Bach. We are gonna talk semifinals part one. We've got just 10 acts to talk about. And uh, I will uh, I, I watched semifinals too, so I saw who goes through uh, cody didn't get there so i'll uh, i'll get to surprise him with, <laughs> <laughs> with the result yeah so this was a, a l- different than what we've seen and uh, to be honest jay i've already kind of peeked ahead to season three oh. and it, they do they do a format very similar to this but we got 10 acts performing and then the next week they did announce uh, results and then the other 10 acts am i correct in that they did the other 10 acts and then the results of this episode. Okay. So they did, they did, they let all 20 perform and then they did the results for the both, both shows. Nope. So <laughs> that makes it so even sem- worse. Semifinals one happened. Okay. Semifinals two happened next week. And at the very end of that episode, we get the results of semifinals one. Okay. So then when do we get the results for semifinals two? at the beginning of finals finals <laughs> so they have to stick around for a whole week to, before Apparently. they even know if they're moving on to the finals of the show yeah, that they're getting ready to do everybody had to be ready to go i guess it's <laughs> it, it's not the right way to do it uh, no it's not doing no. the you know tuesday night wednesday night or whatever it is you know where, where you have the episode one night and the results the following night that it really is um a better way to do it in many ways yes yes um now i mean i can kind of understand why they did it because they don't have terry fader coming back as a guest and they don't have paul zerden coming back john dornboss they don't have any of the you know bianca ryan could come back as a guest bandaloni could come back as a guest (laughs) uh right more bandaloni less um (laughs) less less uh, giant pauses between the next act going through is (laughs) and then you zoom in and you pan across and you zoom out and you pan across and you zoom back in and then you announce the act that's going through (laughs) yes so this just seems like a really weird way to do it so that that means in the in semifinals two the the performances have to be shorter because they have then to shoot in shoe hole shoe in what am i starting to say shoehorn Uh, in shoehorn Shoehorn. in shoehorn in the results at the end yes i think that's um that's accurate Uh, okay but we'll talk about we'll talk about that 90 seconds and they did not take a whole lot of the episode to give the results it was sort of like okay so from the 10 acts last week the acts going through are in no particular order a b (laughs) c d and E, you are the five acts that we'll see in the finals. So it was like, okay. there wasn't a whole lot of fanfare around it. Okay. Um, well, well, we'll talk about that more next week. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's fine. So I'm, I'm going to kind of give an update, Jay, on our format that we're going with. Okay. We've, we've, cha- we've changed things up a little bit, which we, in the biz, we call, in the football biz, we call an audible. <laughs> You're calling an audible. Yeah. We're calling an audible. So, we did two full episodes in auditions. We did auditions one and two together. We did auditions three and four together. And then we did Vegas. And after we did Vegas, we're like, you know, we, we kind of like doing this just one episode thing. We don't really want to pack in two episodes. So we looked at semifinals and we were going to do both semifinals in this podcast, but we decided, eh, no, we don't want this to be a three hour podcast. So we're doing semifinals one, and for the rest of season two, each episode will get its own podcast. So you'll have semifinals one, semifinals two, top 10, top eight, which still seems weird, and then top four. And so that'll kind of put us through to the end of April. Uh, that then gives us about a month before season 16 starts. We'll have some other things maybe pop in there. Uh, we've got some interviews lined up. In fact, we just did an interview. We're not going to tell you who yet, but we kind of already mentioned them in this podcast. So you have a 50-50 <laughs> shot <laughs> of who it's going to be. 
Uh, so actually you have a 25% shot. Yeah. We listed four. But anyway, uh, that'll get us hopefully up to season 16. Yes. Yeah. We, we're, we're tapping on the brakes a little bit. The uh, podcast should be a little bit more bite size, um, bite size length uh, instead of the, the long, you know, two hour marathons that we were going to plus. Uh, so in, um, uh, yeah, I, I think that maybe we sh- could have flipped this on its head and uh, done the auditions as standalone episodes and maybe uh when we when we're down to fewer acts do more episodes per podcast but it is what it is this is what you get thanks for being (laughs) along the ride with us yeah and and i like talking more in depth about the acts once we get to the live show uh you know we're going to talk about them obviously in auditions but we get a lot of yada yada and montages but now is when we're actually getting the good stuff and i want to talk about them a little bit more at this point yeah, this is this is the best of the season, uh, by definition. So it is. Uh, it's or or, or is it? Uh, well, it's supposed to be. You know, we're we're finally going to get down to America's vote, right? Once we're yes. finally down to the top ten or top twenty, uh, America finally gets their their say uh, instead of just the judges. So um, it, it feels like we've gone a long ways to. Um, finally get here you know we've lost some really good acts to get to this yeah. point yeah and I, I guess that's what vegas round is year after year you know the judges have to cut it down to manageable chunks for the for the live shows and you know america can only do so much voting for <laughs> yeah the got yeah. franchise i guess yeah yeah uh, so before we get into it, let's uh, let's give out the business real quick. So you can reach us on Twitter at AGT Time. I'm on there. <clears throat> excuse me. Pardon me. I'm on there at Cody L. Patterson. Jay's on there at One Man Bander. Uh, you can hit us up on Facebook as well, AGT Time Pod. And of course, there's the wonderful email, AGTCast at gmail.com. You've got it. Yes. Got it. So with that, let's jump into the uh, semifinals episode one. Act one is Johnny (laughs) Lone Star. He is our quick trick roper slash Western arts. Uh, He is going to basically just do lassos this time. But uh, in his intro package, he talks about whips and ropes and guns and sort of all the, the Western accoutrement that a uh, uh, an act like him might choose to uh, to use um he comes out he's wearing a black western shirt he's got a black cowboy hat and he's got some fantastic gold <laughs> chaps and a gold <laughs> scarf um what what'd you think of uh, of johnny lone star's look for this episode I love the gold chaps. This was uh, prime live shows for AGT. Uh, there's no better way to start an AGT live show than with gold chaps. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, and they were they were just I, I think fantastic is the word that I I need to use. Um, he, uh, he he's going to work with the lasso this time. He does the thing where he's he's spinning it vertically. And he he you know spins it on his left and jumps through and spins it on his right, back and forth. And he gets a big old lasso going. He jumps up on the uh, on the judge's desk, and he's got such a big lasso going around him that he can uh, essentially get it around him and the judges. Um, did you notice some audio difficulties, some technical difficulties on this uh, performance? Yeah, I have written down, did the sound go weird? It's like the music was coming, wasn't coming through the TV production, but just in the house there in the theater. Yep, that's uh, that's what I said. Audio was weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so something happened with that. Yeah. Fortunately, he's not a singer. It doesn't really affect our uh, enjoyment of this particular act, but um, I, I don't feel like this is a top kind of act top 10 kind of performance what how, how are you feeling after watching johnny lone star no he's he's not a top 10 act did you did you notice the song that he 
performed to? I didn't make a note of it. Did, did you recognize uh, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> He's, um, I, 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 that's probably about the time that that was really hitting it big, right? Uh, probably. Let's, uh, let's check on that. But uh, yeah, that would probably be prime save a horse, ride a cowboy. I'd see t-shirts of that. Um, uh, but also, uh, well, you, you went back uh, earlier, you mentioned, uh, you know, guns and, you know, whips and he's done the whips. I'm not sure that they would allow him to do his gun tricks there in the theater. Yeah. You know, you can be safe with blanks and stuff, but I'm I'm not sure that that's going to translate well to uh to TV, you know. And I'm not sure a hundred percent that like Western arts translates well to the Got Talent, like to the TV stage at least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, it is it tends to be very fast. Uh, you know, it, it's all about the quick draw and the I don't know the minutia of what you're doing, and uh, uh, or or it's on a very big stage, you know. It's on a, in a rodeo ring where you've got mm-hmm. an entire arena to work with, and yeah. so the sort of it's it's not up close and it's not far away. It's sort of this middle distance. I'm I'm not sure that this is the right place for him, uh, but I'm I'm glad that we live in a world where there is a right place for him. <laughs> yes, and I I did like that he did come to the judges' table. I felt that added a little bit more a little bit more entertainment some slight danger i mean i mean you know it's not dangerous but he made it a little more personal he brought it right up to them instead of being further back on the stage um he let he let them see you know that the that the lasso can go all the way around them yeah so uh so save a horse ride a cowboy big and rich 2004 2004 and this episode so about th- is in 2007. 2007 yeah it's so about three years so yeah it's probably prime just, just big enough and time rich. for all the t-shirts to be uh ubiquitous and it's... yeah <laughs> all right uh, very good okay yeah so that's johnny lone star our trick roper western artist uh second act of the night then is cute little julian Irwin, a 14 year old she is uh announced as the youngest competitor in the competition at 14 years old um i have to feel like she's one of the how do i put this one of the oldest youngest competitors to be in the top 20 (laughs) uh Uh, the 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 oldest kid performer is that yeah well i mean when you get down to the top 20 usually there's still some you know preteen in there Yes. Uh, in, in some way or another. Some Angelica and, Hale, or something of that nature. Yeah, yeah. And so the top 20 having a 14-year-old in it feels like uh, if that's your youngest performer, like we've really weeded out a lot of those uh, yeah. kid performers. Yeah. So in season one, Bianca Ryan's younger than Taylor Ware. Is that correct? I think Bianca uh, was 11. I, yep. 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 And Taylor was... 14 i think she was 14 that sounds yeah. right so yeah uh there you go julian Irwin is still um still older than uh at least bianca and uh, i'm not gonna go back and do all the math and, and <laughs> no i'm not doing the math the, either yeah she's the <laughs> oldest youngest performer in the top 20 agt history but well uh we, we got what we got uh she's gonna sing uh bless the broken road uh you cannot tell me this is not on the Cody Patterson playlist. So I have big history with Rascal Flats and their songs, and I've pretty much banned Rascal Flats from the playlist. Yeah. So, <laughs> so my my confusing du- double negative doesn't uh, doesn't fix that. But you don't have this on the playlist. I do not have Rascal Flats in the playlist. No, okay. there's a long and uh rough history with the rascal flats and their songs so all right well we don't need to get into the no we're not gonna get into that but uh just just saying they're uh they're banned okay what do you think of julian erwin then uh i like julian erwin i think she did a good job on this one um you know they they called her a small she's called herself a small town girl that lives in a farmhouse um i thought this was much much better than her auditions it was nice to have instruments 
we missed the headliner at the beginning of the episode we have a live band jay we do we're still yeah. doing the live band uh yes just like we did season one uh it's um same band leader from the tonight show <laughs> <laughs> whose name's escaping me i'm sorry yeah. uh, uh, uh so but it was nice to have this back in the live shows I don't know if we needed it in the auditions. You know, I talked that I, I want them to sing with some sort of instruments. Backing track is fine in auditions. We're in the live show. It's great to hear actual instruments with a live band. Um, so I thought that added a lot to her performance. It really filled it out. Yeah, it's uh, Ricky Minor and the yes and the yep. Uh, so yep. Ricky Minor's band. Uh, it, yeah, I don't the logistics of having a live band for the auditions is pretty tough. Like I have a yeah. hard time thinking, you know, like, okay, guys, I'm going to go do this song. Here's the sheet music and a one and a two. And you know, like th th you're asking a lot of your musicians to play yeah. for any, any and all comers. You would, you would pretty much have to have, you'd have to tell your singers, look, uh, our band only knows this set of songs you got to pick from this list and uh you would You'd also be asking them to do it all day long yeah i mean you would rotate them out well what i was getting ready to say is they did the auditions in different cities so you're not going the band's not going to travel you're basically going to do you're going to audition a band in the city that you're in and maybe you rotate them in and out throughout the day maybe they only perform for a couple hours yeah. um well, and well, you don't need them. Is, um, I, yeah. I guess, but you don't need them for every performance. It's not American Idol. You don't need them for every performance. I suppose. So you only bring them out when you need it when you have a singer. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let's get back to Julian Irwin. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I, I always have a hard time pronouncing it. Is it Julianne? Julienne? Like it, I, it, I think it, it's Julianne. Like because it's I, it's yeah. Julian, Julianne, Julianne. Sure. Like, I, I, I just kind of mumble the end of it so I don't have yeah. to be specific about it. So. Yeah. How, how, how would Iowans pronounce Just pronounce it like Iowans would pronounce it. Well, I, I know a Julianne, so I kind of want to okay. say Julianne, but I. Okay. There's no A in her name, so I'm going to say Julianne. <laughs> Julianne. Okay. Like, like, Ju like, okay. Yeah. Sure. Go for it. I will support Julianne. whatever decision you make, Jay. All right. Well, Julianne Irwin uh she's she's innocent and cute and beautiful and really fun to watch uh you know pierce pointed out you're an ordinary american girl with an extraordinary talent uh sharon said uh you don't flaunt what you got you dress appropriately which i appreciate and yes. uh, i appreciate that like she um just a a a beautiful girl well-dressed not you know, I, i've talked about in the past like i i have trouble with especially with like kid dancers you know it's like they're dancing by definition uses your body but i, I don't like the sexualization of of especially the kid act mm -hmm. and uh and julianne is not that she's yeah really it's about her and a singer and her voice and uh, and she's really easy to watch, really fun to watch. Um, you know, I she doesn't stand out to me as like winner potential, mm -hmm. but she's certainly she deserves a place here on the stage. Yeah, I think she's probably what eh, fourth place potential somewhere around in there, give or take. Okay, All right. okay, <laughs> uh, okay. So that's that's Julian Irwin. She did a. a Beautiful job with a beautiful song that Cody Patterson does not have on his play on his playlist. Uh, third act of the night then is uh, one of our leaders in the clubhouse, I think. Yes, kind of yes. after his auditions, Kevin James, our magician. Uh, it's this Kevin James. Uh, <laughs> he, he comes out on stage. He's wearing a uh, like a, a hazmat suit. Yeah. Um, he pulls some random body parts out of a freezer. Uh, he um, kind of obfuscates with some smoke or his body when he replaces the fake hand that he pulled out of the freezer with his own hand 
uh, coming out of his uh, out of his suit. So it looks like he's holding the fake hand, but actually, it's really his own hand. Sorry for the, uh, you know, ruining the trick. But spoiler alert. Um, so it it looks like the the fake hand is a reanimated human body part. Uh, he put it back in the freezer. The hand does like reach back out of the freezer and try and fight with him over the beer that he pulls out and takes a drink of. This, I, I think this takes the cake more than Sandow Trio Russian Bar for the <laughs> biggest letdown in AGT history. Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't know if I don't know if we can compare. It, it is a, a huge letdown. I'm not sure we could compare it to that because he didn't literally upend his act. Uh, like Russian Trio Bar did, he it just it just completely just fell flat. I mean, it it's he was on such a, a good trick. No, it was not a good trick. No, it, I mean he didn't change up what he does. He still did magic. Um, he didn't come out playing the harp. Uh, he 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 still did magic, but it was really bad magic. Uh, it would he was he was one of our favorites from vegas round i mean yes i i was really high on this guy uh and he seems like he has the potential to do great magic and for some reason this one just fell flat um and i'm not sure what what it was and then it just ended like there was no conclusion it just stopped he just drank a beer and it stopped it was a really weird ending um it, his costuming wasn't very good yeah uh, it just all around it was just disappointing yes I, I, I really liked kevin james up to this point and this was just uh just laid an egg uh, really unhappy with it maybe he spent the week filming king of queens and he just didn't have time to work on his wrong magic kevin act. james wrong. Oh, <laughs> i get that every week jay every week i get that wrong uh no okay so uh, I didn't write down the judges' comments on Kevin James. Uh, uh, they were I not wrote, impressed. Yeah, I wrote down, Piers, we found you creative, innovative, and different than other magic acts. You let yourself down tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely one of the most unique magic acts we've seen. I will say that. Up to this point. Well, I'm just saying, it, of all the magic acts we've seen, his uh, his magic is some of the unique, that, most unique that we've seen. Yeah. We've never seen anyone do what he did in Vegas round. Correct. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So that's that's Kevin James, the, the biggest goose egg of the night. Uh, just I, I just all around disappointed with with that performance. So yeah. Uh, let's let's move on then. We've got Robert Hatcher. He's our singer. Uh, he is a sewage worker who uh, happens to also sing. Uh, you know, very much like in the vein of kind of what um, America's Got Talent likes, right? They had uh, Julian Irwin, right? You're, you're a normal American girl who has the voice of an angel, right? <laughs> Robert Hatcher, you're a normal you know, sewage worker who happens to have a really soulful voice, right? Uh, and he's he's got he's got soul, right? He does have soul, uh, yeah. He sings the song "Run to You." Um, he's got all the you know trills and the runs like a good soul singer has. Um, he's a better singer than me by a mile. Um, I don't feel like this is a hundred, like this is a million dollar act. Um, but I liked it. What what did you think of uh, of Robert Hatcher? I, I liked it too. I thought his voice was very smooth. It was very clear. You could hear, you know, this is uh, Run to You by Whitney Houston. You could hear Whitney kind of in his voice, the way he sang it, but he also sang it in his, he gave it his own. So there was, there was Robert Hatcher, but there was also Whitney in there, uh, which I thought was very, very good. Uh, Jay, a uh, little fashion here. I loved the suit and the pink tie okay all right i loved that better than was like a track suit that he had on before <laughs> i think so i don't remember but you know black suit pink tie real real men can wear pink jay yeah absolutely and and he yeah. looked sharp I, I do he looked sharp yeah 
Uh, Sharon said he looks like a star, sings like a star. All around, you know, depending on what uh, what the rest of the competition does, this might be a really, you know, he's, he's got a, a shot at top 10. Yeah. Uh, one note we had from Pierce was, there's no other show in the world where a guy like you can come from a sewer and I don't have the rest of it, but I'm like, um, basically, wouldn't American Idol pr- be promoting this? <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally, yeah. Uh, he is a singer. Yeah, it's not yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is he too? Is he too old for American Idol? I know they have kind of a certain he age range that they look at. Be, I don't have his age written down here. Okay. Um, yeah, it's possible usually, that he's. Aren't yeah, they usually looking for like sixteen to maybe early thirties? Is that kind of the? Yeah, I think if you get past thirty, thirty-five, you're the uh, you're old news to to okay. American Idol. Okay. So okay. Uh, all right, that was uh, that was Robert Hatcher. Next act of the night was Johnny Come Lately, our rockabilly band. Um, they did not do great at Vegas. Uh, they're just 15 year old kids. Uh, they're gonna sing the song Crazy Little Thing Called Love, uh, by Queen. Is this one on the Cody Patterson playlist? Uh, if it's not, it should be, but I didn't know this was a Queen song, yeah okay uh, it, it's a different feel right than most okay. queen i and i think you know this is one of my favorites if not maybe my outright favorite queen song like this is a really yeah it, over it, bohemian rhapsody well that's the that's the one that everyone thinks of first okay um, yeah but this I, I like this one it's fun okay it's, okay it, it's got that that rockabilly you know old rock style to it um just early I, queen I don't know if it's an early queen. I'm not sure where it's in there. I'm not a real queen historian, but man, I like the song. <laughs> um, so, you know, they, again, 15 year old boys and girl that make up this band. Uh, it was fun. It felt like some, you know, teenagers playing a song together. It didn't feel great. It was no. very, very good. It was very good for a high school garage band, <laughs> right? But I, I don't know that it's, you know, best in America kind of kind of quality. No, they um, still had some, I've, like some, they still had some timing issues. It still felt, it didn't feel as hurried as last week's. Last week's felt really hurried. This one didn't feel as hurried. They had a technical issue as well. Yeah, they talked about how the uh, bass players, um, bass came unplugged unplugged um and you know in general like the first part of the song was just kind of flat like they were still sort of getting their groove yep. they, they got to the instrumental it got better they they you know really hit their solos and then the, they do the thing where uh they, they slow it down right it, this thing they called love right they, they really bring it down and then they they pump it back up again and by the end like they really had kind of gelled they, they'd really mm-hmm. sort of hit that but it took a while to get there and you can't be that you can't take time to get there at this level in the competition yeah you know that, that's not what this is you have to be perfect the whole way through that's what the point of the song of, of the show is so um i'm having trouble putting my finger on exactly what needs improved but there was something kind of missing here um might have just been the bass being unplugged i don't know (laughs) Uh, pierce said they were fresh and exciting um sharon said i saw there was a technical problem with the bass but i like your style uh hoff said the first time you had energy uh the second time and this time you guys looked rehearsed which i I thought you know that might be kind of getting to where my issue was right with the um they 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 look like they're on the stage instead of just like the 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 freewheeling kids out there playing the bass yeah Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, crazy little thing called Love came out in 1979. The B side in the UK was We Will Rock You. Oh, man. Okay. 
stadium rock at its best. Yeah. So 79, that's got to be after uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, I would say so. That's got to be Prime Queen right, right in there. You only so. get uh, you only get uh, research like this on our podcast, Jay. <laughs> uh, Seventy five for Bohemian Rhapsody. Yep. So another yep. five years later, four years yep. later. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, and this maybe is them. Like we've already kind of established ourselves. Now we get to experiment a little bit, try some mm-hmm. fun stuff. But and this this is a fun song. Yeah, uh, I I thought it was a great choice for him, um, but I I can appreciate that Pierce wants to hear something more contemporary. But like that's not what they are. They're a rockabilly band. So yes, um, I'm I'm not sure exactly what he would like to hear them say, sing. But um, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm happy with the song choice. Could could they do save a horse, ride a cowboy, and rockabilly? <laughs> I think they could, but I don't know that they should. <laughs> Maybe that's what contemporary, uh, that's the contemporary that uh, Piers is talking about. Yeah, uh, might be a little off base with that one. <laughs> uh, all right. Any, anything else on Johnny Comes Lately? No, no. All right. Johnny the, Comes the, Well, the, the bass player did seem pretty upset that his chord came loose. It, he I mean, really they're fifteen. Did. They're fifteen, and he seemed pretty tore up about it. Um, not the end of the world. No, but, uh, no, yeah, he was. It's dude. It's gonna come loose many more times on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just watch. <laughs> uh, okay, let's talk. Let's talk Kashif. Uh, this is our Bollywood dancer. Um, he is. He's the one that I. I still don't know if he's in on the joke. Um, but, uh, this time it's not going to be just Kashif. It's going to be him and some background dancers. Yes. Um, I think that this is a good production choice. Yes. Uh, because he doesn't have any new moves. Um, he doesn't really have any signature moves. Um, he is fun, possibly funny. I'm trying to figure that out. Um, what'd you think of Kashif's performance? I did like that we had the dancers. I thought that added more to it. Uh, I liked the outfit that he wore. I thought it felt more professional and more, I'm not sure if this is appropriate. I mean, but it felt more Bollywood. I mean, is that okay. appropriate to say? Can you say that? Yeah, I think okay. So. It, it felt more Bollywood. Um, it didn't feel like he was Napoleon Dynamite as much this week as we've seen him in the past. Okay. <laughs> it felt like he was really trying to be a Bollywood dancer. Okay. Um he I I, I emphasis trying. Trying. Yeah. Uh Pierce said you have no talent in the personality of a pancake. <laughs> that's that's kind of where I'm landing on on and, and I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's Kashif. I made a note of that. Instead of Kashif, okay. so my apologies, Kashif. Kashif, jeez, Louise. Uh, <laughs> Kashif. So, um, the some of these oddball acts grow on you as we yeah. see them more, right? Okay. Yeah. Not Kashif. He was great the first time, and not as great the second time, and he isn't better this time. It's, yeah. It, it, it's a, a steady uh, downward trend with, with Kashif. Uh, Sharon said, I think everybody will be do, doing the Kashif by the end of the year. Hoff said, uh, what, what is that? It looked like Baywatch on acid. I'm going to call it Bolly Watch. Uh, the, the Kashif, you, I don't would, know. It's, it's this move where. Uh, <laughs> would, you, would you watch uh, Kashif in the uh, Hoff role on Baywatch? Or Bali watch. Bali, I didn't even watch yeah. Baywatch, so <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> uh, hey, ha- Hoff is in his name. Ka ha shift. Ka ha shift. Uh-huh. It's a stretch. I'm stretching it's, there. It's it's, it's it's um like they they're trying to force a 
square peg in a round hole here. That's, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, um, I, I feel like we've already spent too much time on Kasha. But, uh, <laughs> he, he made the right production choice by adding some, some dancers. Yes. That's the best I can say. Yep. Yeah. And, and also one, just one final thought, his music didn't sound like it was a techno Bollywood. It was actually Bollywood music. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Props to uh, our, our, our host, to Jerry Springer, because he made a point to announce what song each singer was doing or yes. to what song they were performing. And <laughs> Jerry Springer told us the song that Kashif was performing to. I did not write it down. I was, I was going to ask you if you wrote it down. <laughs> but, but I appreciated that he took the time and the effort to pronounce as far as I can yeah. tell, accurately, the song that Kashif was performing to from the movie with the title that, again, he seemed to really, uh, and, really and he nailed, nailed it. it. Yeah. yeah, he so nailed it. At, at uh, minimum, he pretended to nail it. <laughs> Would we know any different? No, I wouldn't. No, so no. that's fine. Okay, and since you brought this up and we're talking about uh, Kashif and some of this, what did you think of kind of the introductions for the for the the performances and the the production of what production was going on during that time okay so the the like the video intro packages we're talking about yeah so we did the video intro packages and then and then uh jerry would announce the performance and like you said he would say the song or whatever it is but then we'd also get the agt music kind of over him and it felt like we were either going to commercial or coming back from commercial and it, it felt it, it it felt out of place. I guess it didn't really bother me. I didn't uh, okay. I didn't notice that the, the, that thing about the production. Uh, as far as like the actual video packages, I think that they're figuring out how to do those. Okay. Um, they haven't quite nailed them because by the end of the episode it's like okay another video package they're gonna say that, like this is the biggest night of their life <laughs> right like do yeah. them well, saying that i would we, give we anything to go through like well we haven't hit america's got feels yet we're 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 headed in that direction yes like, we can see that's where we're going but like they haven't figured out how to really tell each of these stories better yet yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, this is the first season that I watched, and this was like I fell in love with the show with this season, mm -hmm. and having Johnny Lone Stars and uh, you know your your Julian Irwins and your Johnny Come Latelys and your Robert Hatcher, like, is like okay, there really is a place for anybody on this show, and. Uh, you know, I, I didn't mind, or uh, in fact, I think I liked that, you know, it wasn't about the performers as much as it was about the performances. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what I want it to be. Uh, you know, come out there, wow me, and then, you know, go back to your home and you, know, you work in the sewer or you are eighth grader or whatever it is. Like, you just, like, this is sort of a thing that, you're very capable of doing but you still this isn't the thing that you do okay yeah so that's good it's a good way to explain it I, I guess what was bothering me a little bit is we were getting the agt music over him explaining the performance as it was coming on but it felt like we were getting ready to go to commercial like usually the music they're playing when they're getting ready to head to commercial break and i'm like so we're gonna now it's it's this thing of we're going to announce the performer and then go to commercial. And I hate that. <laughs> but did they go to commercial each time? No, no, no. They would, right. they would so play the music. He would announce it. But I was getting in this mode like, oh, we're getting ready to go to commercial break. And I would kind of then tune out for a second. But no, then we'd go right into Julian, <laughs> Julian Irwin. Right. And you've got that visceral like, oh, they're going to do the thing where they announce them and we're going to go to break. And so you're, you're already like turned off and you're turning away yes. from the yes what? but but oh. but it's, 
but it did it every single performance. And you think I'd catch on, but it's so ingrained in me that they're playing the music and we're going to commercial break that it it tricked me every single performance. <laughs> Uh, okay. Well, I guess that didn't, um, that, that didn't register with me. Okay. My apologies. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Tasha, thanks for, thanks for gracing our screens. <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. Go get your tape player. Uh, can we talk about the next act? Yes. All right. This is, uh, this is Butterscotch. She's going to beat Fox. She's going to sing, uh, before commercial break, I did make a note of this. We get a <laughs> shot of her eating a banana. On oh, I missed that. Commercial break. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I don't know if that was uh, like their their B roll footage that they they stuck in there, or if that was like actually behind the scenes in the green room or what. But yeah, uh, that, that was fantastic. Uh, she's gonna sing "Summertime," a jazzy song. Uh, yeah. Uh, Irwin, right? um name's escaping me um okay so uh she starts with uh, are, are you wanting to are you want to know who sings summertime is that what you're yeah, asking gershwin oh okay. George gershwin i think right uh wrote, well i got El, ella, Fitz, ella fitzgerald ella fitzgerald did summertime originally yes, yes. Is it by gershwin uh yeah george gershwin song yeah okay all right so i'm i'm right okay so uh, she's going to start with some mouth trumpet, which I don't think was her best choice, but I didn't hate it. Um, it, it, it did she, not sound like bees. Is that what Sharon said? Sound like bees? It didn't. No. Okay. No. Uh, okay. So she she started with the mouth trumpet, and she goes into this really relaxed groove uh, as she's singing and beatboxing at the same time, which is still just mind-bogglingly cool yeah um, i don't know how she does that and, and so i wrote that this act like it doesn't translate to like you wouldn't go out and buy a butterscotch C cd or you know listen to an audio file of butterscotch because listening to it doesn't have the same awe as watching her do both of these things at the right. same time right if you're listening to it you just think that it's been mixed together right so yeah like you you need to experience it like on your screen in front of you or on the stage in front of you uh so it really does need to be live to, to fully appreciate what butterscotch does yeah and and i kept watching because when she was doing both of them i wanted to watch her her mouth to see if it moved or what it was doing, but the camera kept going away. And also I think it needs to be in high def. I think the standard def was not enough to really get that good definition because I was, I was I was like, is she, is she playing with, is she, did she mix it together? And is she playing over it? You know, or is she actually doing this herself? And she has to be doing it herself, both the song and the beatboxing. Yes, she yes. she very much is, and you can tell by you know like the way that she's forming her vowels and some of the stuff that she does. Uh, you know, she's she's figured out these tricks around continuing to make the noise while she's uh, making the beatbox noises. Like that's the the thing that she's perfected so so well. Yeah. Um it's it's fantastic. It's it really is. I I enjoyed the heck out of this performance. Pierce said, I hate the outfit, but you're the one of the most gifted, original, creative acts. Uh, you've got it. Sharon said, I wish you hadn't started with the trumpet. It sounded like a fly. Uh, Hoff said, you're awesome, sexy, effortless. I think you're going to win this competition. So uh, it, generally high praise from the judges. Sharon was the one who was the lowest on Butterscotch. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a little surprising and that she picked out the one little thing she she only mentioned the trumpet thing and then she said the rest of it was was great yeah so, um and uh, and the, the the camo the camo was very 2007 camo oh, with yes. a with a sideways camo hat very 2007 all right yeah um but i don't know i i think she's she's beautiful i think she sings and and performs beautifully uh, i i really really enjoyed butterscotch and yeah you know, this is 
maybe one of the acts where like their their persona is is part of what attracts me to them, right? Mm-hmm. Her like I'm I'm just a little old butterscotch. I'm not gonna you know, I, <laughs> I'm not gonna talk myself up too much. I'm actually kind of shy. Um, oh, I'm on. Like now I'm gonna sing and I'm gonna beatbox and I'm gonna blow your minds. And I'm over and I'm just gonna pick up my banana and walk off the stage. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Right. So, and and I. I wonder how much of that is her cultivating that persona and how much of that is actually her. Yeah. But uh, yeah. It, it works for me. So don't, uh, don't stop. Uh, uh, real okay. quick on real quick on summertime. It was uh, from Porgy and Bess. Did you ever see Porgy and, Por- Bess. Porgy and yeah. Bess? I, I should have been able to come up with that, but okay. Um, yeah, I was not. Okay. All right, so that was Butterscotch. Eighth act of the night. We ready to talk Sideswipe? Yes. Okay, this is our martial arts dance group. Um, I uh, wrote that these guys could really use a signature move. Um, There's no one thing that these guys do that's like, yep, that's the Sideswipe move. And, And that's what they need. That's what I feel like they need to actually, like, punch their ticket, right? Um, okay like, i can see that they, they do all these things they do all these moves they do them so so well um but i don't have you know usually with these acts i write down like and you know this is the thing that i saw tonight and there just wasn't one yeah i you mean know, they it, did their they did their flips and they did their cartwheels and um i was real excited in their in their package where they showed them practicing with some staffs or light sticks or something and i'm like oh are they finally gonna actually like bring some props out on stage nope (laughs) they just do they they did take pierce's advice and do some dance moves Mm -hmm. uh they added that uh they added some i guess a dance song i don't remember if they've had songs music in their auditions i don't remember yeah at the end of their performance in like one swift motion they all ripped off their shirts at the same time of course they did well like the, <laughs> is is that the side side swipe move it, it might be I okay don't know. it's, it's, it's kind of lame <laughs> well coming from two middle-aged guys i mean uh, yeah i don't know I, yeah nobody wants to see me rip my shirt off so no no one sees will see me rip my shirt off no we'll we'll, we'll stick with what we're doing uh and you know like if this were a bodybuilding competition i think they they go home with the prize uh, you know <laughs> put, put a pin in it but uh uh i don't know like so pierce said you know maybe do more dance moves uh do you think that pierce is right do they need more dance yeah i don't think they need to become a dance group but maybe just add a little bit of you know a little bit of dance rhythm just a little, a little bit not, not a just a little bit um and maybe a little choreography instead of just two minutes of flips and kicks and i i wonder if they need to go you know like take a cue from the cheerleaders and go higher right let's let's get some throws let's get some uh you know where you guys are are interacting with each other or okay you know, lifting where, each where other they, they, they kind of just push each other up in the air and yeah yeah okay. instead of you know we're gonna all four do these moves at the same time it's like we're gonna do this move like the all four of us are gonna come together to create a move if, if that yeah. makes sense you know it's it's yeah. a um it's not each of us you know hi ha kick cartwheel flip like you know we're you're gonna come over to me and i'm gonna throw you in the air and you're gonna do a cartwheel flip yeah like that that kind of thing should Um, they do that should should they do this on stilts (laughs) i'd love to see it (laughs) um i i think there's uh more of a danger of uh of death if they were (laughs) certainly Uh, all right we'll we'll, we'll talk second story guys next week uh so that was sideswipe anything else on sideswipe well sharon just getting a little thirsty with them she she did yeah um 
and and good on her because the guys get uh, inappropriate with some of the young ladies or the the ladies as well. So that's okay. tit for tat. <laughs> okay, as long as we have equal opportunity uh, thirstiness around here. Uh, yeah, if, yeah. <laughs> but no. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure how to deal with some of that stuff, right? Like in the, yeah. in the, in the Me Too world, like it's it, it's a little bit off-putting, and it's always been a little bit off-putting to me. But like, I don't know. Is, is it funny? Is it? I, I mean, know. do we know that Sharon's not really serious? I mean, she's a happily married woman, right? Do we know that she's just not she's not serious? She's just teasing a little bit and. It, I mean, I don't, I, it's, it's, but is that okay? Even if it's, yeah, just I mean, like when you don't, when you don't know where the line is, do you try to stay as far away from it as possible? But they also rip their shirts off. Like sex appeal is part of what they do. I guess so. Right? Yeah. Like, they, and having never been a part of an act where sex appeal is part of what we do, <laughs> uh, like, uh, so, you know, I'm, so I'm not you, sure you, where the line is. You never did your one man band. You never had your, uh, your rig on without your shirt. <laughs> No, I didn't. <laughs> there would be chafing. But we can't have this. It doesn't work. Uh, I, I don't know. It's it's something that we see come up uh, time and time again. You know, sort of inappropriate or on the edge of appropriate comments that um, I, I don't care for that. Um, and, and I'm not sure exactly how to do that right right especially yeah. on these these the acts that have the sex appeal like yes well we're going to talk about the glamazons here in a minute so we are we are yeah uh before that though should we uh stop down for manuel romero do, do we do we have to uh have you ever really loved a woman <laughs> this is on the playlist <laughs> and i realized that there's actually uh, there's have you ever really loved a woman and have you loved a woman you know there's two so there's there's the brian adams have you ever really loved a woman and then there's the eric clapton have you loved a have you ever loved a woman so if you take out the really it's two different performers two totally different songs as well two different totally different songs yeah um yeah okay so both of those are on the playlist then have you ever really loved a woman? Uh, have you ever loved a the, woman? The, the Brian Adams song is. I don't know if the Eric Clapton one okay. is. All right. Okay. Uh, I don't know. He sings the song. The the ladies in the audience hoot and holler for him. Uh, he throws in a touch of Spanish at the end. Did you catch that? Yes, I do. I do like that. Yep. I thought that was nice. Uh, yep. To set him apart a little bit. Yep. I don't know that it was enough. Um, you know, it kind of felt like replacement level performance. You know, top twenty, not top ten, is fine. For, yeah, for Manuel. Um, yeah, it it felt like it was very flat, and and we've used this word on other things. Thin. It didn't yeah. feel it didn't feel full at all. Yeah, his uh, his voice definitely wasn't as soulful, soulful, so soulful, or as strong as um, Robert Hatcher. No, no, and if having you know, Manuel is number nine and Robert Hatcher is number four, right? There's a, a few acts between them that gives you an opportunity to for Manuel to stand on his own, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but if we saw them back to back, I'm I think Manuel would have fallen flatter, maybe. Yes. Um, yep. Here's said you've got to go for it you have to rip the heart out of it he, he wasn't impressed with the song choice uh sharon said you are very confident and hoff said you've got it all i think you're going to go a long way so okay. uh, I, I don't know if hoff is saying a long way in this competition or like <laughs> as a singer in life but um or just as a as a human being in life. as a human but, being yes <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not sure that what Hoff was saying was like you're going to go a long way in this competition. I think it was more like as as a human on Earth, <laughs> you're, you're going to do okay. <laughs> so, you're you're going to go a long way. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So that was Manuel Romero. Anything else about him? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's talk. Let's talk Glamazons. Well, I mean, well, real quick. Did you like Kim better or did you like um, uh, Kevin James better? Which which oh, do you think geez. was worse? I think Kevin James was worse. Okay. I do. And and maybe because my expectations were so high. Yes. Um, yeah. You know. Like I, I, I compared it to the Sandow Trio Russian Bar letdown, but like that was at least something. Sandow Trio, like this. Uh, we, Dude, would you, if you're it. if you're a vote if you're voting, would you look at the body of work? Like we know what he can do. This just happened to fall flat. He's going to learn his lesson, do better in the next round. Or do you think, you know, is, is you it know round by round? That's a that's good the, question. Yeah. And, it, it's one of the things that the judges will, it, we talk about them moving the goalposts for, mm-hmm. you know, who they like and don't like. And I can totally imagine them saying like, you know, Kevin, this was not a great performance, but your body of work, you know, your previous performances were fantastic. It, yeah. Everything you've done up to this point has been so, so good. We're going to give you a pass and, and we think that you should go through. But you can also say, like, Kevin, you were so good, and this was so bad, we can't yeah. possibly put you through. Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely see it. So uh, let's talk Glamazons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the uh, the four ladies, the burlesque vocal group. Uh, they're going to sing Donna Summer's Hot Stuff. The vocals were flat. Uh, there wasn't much for harmonies, no real intricacies to their uh to their singing um it wasn't much for dancing like it it felt amateur uh and i'm I'm ready for them to do something more um amazons do it for you what did you think of this performance I, i did like that they featured one of their singers so you know they they at least did that they did a solo a little bit i kind of like that uh they're i think their voices are still very very good uh they've still got some powerful songs they pick the right songs you know they always pick the right songs uh you know hot stuff that's a great upbeat tempo that kind of fits their their brand of what they're trying to do um I don't think they haven't gone wrong at all on their song picks. Um, okay. I, I, I like this. I mean, it was on par with what last week. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure it's a top 10, but maybe a, I don't know, top 12. They're probably right. They're probably sixth or seventh, maybe they're on the bubble. In the, they're right yeah. on the bubble. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, like, so maybe this is where the America's got feel starts to come in. Right. Because yeah. they're, they're these big boned ladies, right? These these larger ladies. Plus plus who, plus size. Plus yes. size is a great yes. great yeah. term for it. Uh and and like they're coming out here in the burlesque lingerie, right? With the fishnets and the corsets and the uh the cleavage and you know, like they're 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 beautiful, sexy, plus size plus size ladies and and like that's kind of the message is you you know we're we're gonna be who we are we're not gonna apologize for it and you know we we're we're comfortable we're happy being who we are and you don't need to tell us to be a different size or a different shape uh and and we can be sexy this way and like i the you know that's their story right and that gives them a, a certain edge over some of these other acts. It's like, well, I mean, yeah, I guess he's a pretty good singer or, you know, Oh yeah, I guess, you know, like that's, that's a band that played. Um, like they, they, they do have sort of that, um, that, that intangible, right. That, that story that comes with it, right. The America's mm-hmm. yeah. got feels of it. Yep. Um, so we're, we're starting to maybe get there with, with the Glamazons, right? That's the direction that we're heading uh, with with their intro package, with their stories. Um, but I'm I'm not sure that this was a great performance, right? Okay. I, the performance and the performers, if I'm going to separate them, I don't think it was a great performance as much as I may love the performers. Yeah. 
No, I, I can see that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Pierce talked about uh, big is beautiful, sexy, talented. Uh, Sharon said, if I had your confidence, I wouldn't have spent a fortune to have it all sucked out. Uh, so she must have uh, had some some plastic surgery in the past. <laughs> uh, Pop said, you've got the confidence and you, uh, you kick it singing. It was really great. So uh, it, it, high praise from the judges. It, the Glamazons, they do a great job in that last act of the night spot. Uh, you know, kind of leave you uh, smiling and, and appreciating sort of what they do. So um, that's that's 10 acts. What any further thoughts on the Glamazons then? No, I mean, I, I did enjoy it. But again, I think they're still kind of right on that bubble. I don't know if they're top five, but I had fun watching it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Should we talk about results now or do we wait until next week when no we, sh- we gotta go we gotta go with the episode so if the epi- if the results are in the episode then uh that's when we gotta do results okay all right well no uh <laughs> no results for you tonight you, you all are gonna have to tune in next week to hear the results Come back next, or google it <laughs> <laughs> don't don't google it listen no, download <laughs> download listen we'll tell right, you right 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 yeah we'll come back next week so it's it, as we pointed out, it's funny that they didn't. Um, they didn't res- announce the results at the beginning of the next episode. It's at the very yes. end of the next yes. episode where the yes. where the results are. So, uh, uh, all right. Well, then, is there anything else that we need to talk about this week? That's all there is. I- yeah, that's all there is. It's going to be a nice little compact uh, episode. No? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, uh, actually, it looks like... So, yeah, it's a, it's a nice little compact episode, so uh, we don't really have much more to talk about this episode. Or you can tweet at both of us uh, through the... at, at AGT time, and uh like us on facebook rate review subscribe and we appreciate you guys for listening and have a great night have a great night stay safe